Hi and thanks for joining me again. Okay, so this is the winterizing chapter. Now, whether it be a touring caravan, a motorhome or a boat, all of those particular properties will have their own yearly servicing requirement. So those are things that you're going to need to look at your own user handbook and, and speak to your own service engineers about. However, for each one of those particular properties, there are common themes across when it comes to winterizing. So what I'm going to do is just take you through some processes which a lay person like me can carry out myself as DIY. Okay, so let's get on with that. Okay, so we're starting in the living room here. Now, these uh, particular uh, processes work exactly the same when it comes to uh, touring caravans, uh, static caravans, lodges, uh, uh, motorhomes, boats, and so on and so forth. Basically, what we're trying to do is protect the property through the winter time to reduce mold, to increase that air supply around uh, the particular property, etc., etc. So, um, whether you're laying up for winter or you're going to use your property for occasional use. Really, it's a judgment call. How far you go with these particular processes uh, or, or not is the case maybe, but we'll show you some alternatives of, as we go. So I'm starting in the living room, gonna work my way back to the kitchen, the bedroom, the bathroom, etc., and so on. Okay, so the first thing what you're gonna to want to do is to remove any cushions uh, and also the actual seating itself. That could get damp through the layup period. If you're uh, using your particular property throughout the winter time, what you may want to do is just stack them up or what you could do is put a cotton sheet over the top and what that will allow is a, is a bit of breathing air getting through but the cotton sheet itself will absorb the damp that's in there so what we can also do is make sure that our curtains which are very pretty here but they're on tie backs what you want to make sure is that those are actually disconnected and you allow the curtains to hang freely and that will make sure that you know the, the material can breathe so any nets that you may have in a particular property what you want to do is close those do not close the curtains during the winter time you do good some sunny days it may be very cold but they are sunny and by just closing the nets it's very very good for security but what it will also do is it, it just still allows the sun to come through obviously and create a certain amount of heat in the property and again reduce mildew and so on if you have any radios tvs any electrical items that are in there what you want to do is maybe and if you don't want to remove them um, just put a towel or a sheet over those as well on tvs what you have here TV remote controls um, there are remote controls for various things you're definitely going to want to take the batteries out of those now I've got into the habit over the years of just taking a battery out and what happens during the winter time they're not being used and you find and I'm sure you've had this yourself where you find that one battery is particularly corroded at the end what I've got into the habit of so that you're not losing the batteries is actually just taking one of the batteries out putting it in the wrong way round and and simply just putting the uh, catch back in there. It just means that you just have to flip the battery whenever you want to use it. Okay, so um, in this particular property, you have got high and low cupboards. So what you want to do is quite simply, just make sure that all of your drawers are pulled open and left ajar. What that does is it makes sure that the air is circulating around there. And remember that air contains oxygen and oxygen is a very, very good sterilizer. But if you leave your cupboards open, make sure you give them a hoover, especially over the winter time, because you don't want to have biscuit crumbs and so on, and obviously just entice vermin to come into the actual property. So that's the living room. What we'll do is we'll move back to the kitchen and take it from there. Okay, so we're in the kitchen, so we've got a few uh, little winterizing tasks to do. The first thing you're obviously going to want to do is make sure that your uh, property is drained down every time you leave it throughout the winter months. And of course, we would encourage you to do that after most trips to keep the system clean and fresh. When you have carried out your drain down, just make sure to go around uh, your entire property and open all of your taps. If they are combination taps here, just move the handle to the middle and leave it in the open position. That will open the two pipes, the hot and the cold, uh, going to there. What I would also do is get um, half a cup of antifreeze, put it down into the sink. and um, It basically just gets it down into the U-bends, really. It's a, it's a belt and braces approach. Um, also, what you're going to want to do is look at cleaning out the fridge. You can do this with something like this, which is a mold and mildew remover. You can also use antibacterial wash in there as well as just a spray and wipe the fridge out. When you're finished, obviously, what you want to do is make sure that all of your cupboards and the fridge are left in the open position. Make sure with your particular cupboards that you clean them and just get any crumbs or any foodstuffs in there because we don't want to encourage any vermin to come along. 
What you may also wish to use is one of these. This is a little water soaker or you, they come in different names, desiccants, etc. What it basically does is it allows you to be able to put crystals in the top and it will absorb any moisture in the air and obviously that will collect. You'll want to check your van quite regularly or, or your property quite regularly and obviously just to empty that water out and, and replace the crystals. Now these are very good, especially if you put them on you know, hard surfaces around the like. So you can see microwaves here, you've got your cooker, you've got your fridge, etc. So any electronic devices up the front, if you've got a TV and so on, uh, put them around the electrical devices. And of course, set them on the floor uh, so that you're, you're absorbing for the material itself. I just want to show you one thing here just to finish off. If you use your particular property occasionally, throughout the winter months I'm talking about um, and, and you find that you have the, the connection a hard uh, 240 volt connection into the property say to operate the fridge uh, and so on you'll have a freezer and it's hard to tell if your electricity has been turned off for a period of time um, you say may have some foodstuffs in there especially chicken and so on you don't want it to the, the power to be cut to the appliance and then your chicken defrost now you've got about 24 hours when the electricity is cut you have about 24 hours to actually uh, for your, your 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 freezer to stop freezing the food and for the food then to start to thaw but this is just a little life hack as they would call them to know that the 24 hours is up and that your food is potentially uh, defrosted what you can do is use a little dish like this and fill it full of water set it into your freezer and let the ice form let it let it freeze then what to do is put a penny and set it on top of the ice now if your appliance the power has been cut to it and there a, a, you know the food is starting to defrost what will happen is the penny will simply fall to the bottom of the dish and when the appliance comes back on the water will freeze again but when you look at it you will see the penny at the bottom and not on the top and you will know that this ice has defrosted as well as the food and you will know whether or not the, the food has been spoiled or not Okay, so we're in the bedroom now, so what we're going to want to do is any cushions that are about the place, you might want to actually remove them or indeed put a sheet over the top of them. And also what you uh, want to do with fixed beds in any particular property, sometimes you will be able to do this, is to actually lift the mattress up high so that you're allowing air to get underneath and allowing air to on the top here just to, to be able to keep any mold and, and mildew at bay. Also what we want to do is hang any curtains, take them off their tie backs just to allow them to hang freely as well just as mentioned earlier on and indeed any nets that you have keep them closed or any little fly screen type things you want to keep those closed as well they are good for security but they will let the sun's rays come in and create a little bit of heat there so that's the bedroom done. Okay, so we're right back here in the bathroom. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure, again, that you've carried out your drain down. You've drained the hot and the cold side of the taps in the wash hand basin and the hot and cold side of the shower, making sure to bring the shower head down as close to the floor as you can. Now, if you do have a particular toilet which is drawing its water from the actual main onboard water tank, what you want to make sure is that you simply press the electric button here and what that will do is that that will drain uh, the toilet also. If in the case of a boat, if you have a normal type flush toilet as part of the drain down you just push down the little float but what you're going to want to make sure after the drain down is carried out that you then go around and flush any toilets that are in that particular boat. Now, when you're finished that, what I would do simply is for a normal type of toilet that is a normal flush type you find in your home, which you may have on a boat, what I would do is I would, uh, after it's flushed, you'll have about an inch of water in the bottom of the cistern, put a half a cup of antifreeze down in there uh, into the cistern and a half a cup of antifreeze down into the toilet bowl itself. For belt and braces approach for the plug holes in the wash hand basin on any type of vehicle, caravan, motorhome or boat, uh, just down into the plug holes in the bathroom, a half cup of antifreeze down, just for the U-bends down in there. Now, it's really not that necessary, but at the end of the day, it's just, it is a belt and braces approach, so antifreeze down into both of those. Whilst we're back here, just remember that if you have drained down the, the, the entire system, if you have any outside showers, that you've also drained those also. What you want to do then is make sure that your uh, taps are all left in the open position and again if they are combination taps you want to bring, bring them to the left 
then to the right and then to the middle and then lift the handle. That will make sure that the two pipes leading to that tap are left in the open position. In the case of cassette toilets, what you're going to want to maybe invest in is some Thetford maintenance spray and apply that to the blade and the seal uh, just to prevent any corrosion. And finally, of course, uh, when it comes to the bathroom, again, you want air to circulate. So leave all of the cupboards uh, in the open position and just to, uh, to keep mold and mildew at bay. Right, so security is essential and you're going to want to make sure that your security system is operational if you have one on board. And what you're also going to want to make sure is that you've locked all of your windows and your doors. Now, what I would suggest also is that you will have vents in the property and that's going to allow a certain amount of air to come around and circulate and so on. Uh, so just make sure not to cover those. But if you also have one of these, which is a fly screen, what you can do is keep that closed. Obviously, it'll stop anything getting in. But in any of those nice days, <laughs> if there are any throughout the winter, what you can do is keep that closed, but keep your door open. And that will encourage fresh air to get around your particular property and it will keep damp and mildew at bay. OK, as part of your routine, you're going to want to drain any onboard tanks in the case of motorhomes, boats or indeed some caravans. Also, these barrels, you'll want to actually take these off, disconnect them um, from the wall. Uh, take your hoses out, make sure that they're drained and also just make sure that these have been emptied. Also, if you are laying up for the winter time, uh, what you might want to do, flow won't have any uh, part in, in sterilizing these particular barrels or tanks. So what you might want to do is use the sterilizer of your choice, put it in there, swish it around or in, indeed the onboard tank. We're not totally against using um, sterilizer. It's just you don't need to use it all the time. Flow will clean your system to 99.95% and it will also strip the biofilm that is gathering on the walls. So all through the year, what you can use is flow after most trips and what that will make sure is that your system is perfectly showroom fresh. However, what you might want to do at the end of the season or at the beginning of the season, fill these particular tanks, draw them through the pipes and through the taps, leave them for the night and then use flow to, to push that water back out of those taps again. So you end up with a system that is completely empty and sterilized and fresh. So also what you want to do with any of the onboard tanks and the barrels is leave these lids off after you've given them a sterilizing. Now what you can actually do is use uh, a lady's pop sock here and what you can do is you can just put that over the lid of the actual barrel. Now, to hold it onto the shim, what it has is an elastic band, which will hold it tight there. Um, but what it does is the fine mesh will still allow the air to circulate around there. Now, the oxygen in air is a great sterilizer as well. So just keep that nice and fresh, but the mesh will keep any of the bugs out. So also what you'll find is that lids, whenever you take them off and disconnect them and so on, they have a habit of going missing. So what you can do and what I would recommend is that you get a lid, put it into a, a plastic shopping bag, and simply just tie it on to the handle like that and that should keep you going. So whether it be winter or you're just laying up for the weekend, if you're just not about, what you want to make sure is that you've got a well-approved wheel clamp in place. And this throughout the winter months also might be part of your insurance policy. So you might just want to look into that. Okay, what some people actually do as well is they remove the, the wheels themselves and they fit winter wheels and they're basically a square plate that are, are bolted onto your hub and the vehicle actually sits on them. Now, um, again, that cures two problems. It's good for security and also it's good for your insurance policy. This, be it a, a caravan, a motorhome, a boat or whatever, it's a heavy enough vehicle that is sitting on your tires. Now, if they sit for long enough in one position, what's going to happen is they are going to crack or the bottom is going to end up like a 50 pence piece. So first of all, what you're going to want to do is make sure that your pressure is set correctly. And what you may want to do is roll the vehicle backwards and forwards into different positions throughout a long period of time. What you could also consider is just jacking the vehicle up and putting it onto axle stands. But your wheels are very, very important. Um, so look after those. Okay, so whether you're going to use your property for occasional use or indeed right through the winter, uh, your battery is quite important. In a lot of newer uh, properties, what you'll find is that you have a battery which obviously gives you power for your security system. So you just need to consider, um, it's a judgment call, whether or not you disconnect your battery over the winter time or not. 
There are other methods of keeping your battery just topped up. Be careful of just a normal battery charger. That's good just to get initial power into a battery, that's fine, but it will actually ruin the acid inside if, if you keep it connected to the battery uh, for a long period of time. Now, you can get solar panels, which are you know, obviously placed inside in the window of, of the property. Um, and that will give you just some trickle charge into it, just enough to get it in. But we also do have this little device here, and I, I, I really do like these. These are just called little trickle chargers, and basically what they do is you get two ends. You've got a red and a black, and they connect up to uh, your connectors there. And what you also have is this little socket and plug, essentially, and you can't go wrong whenever it comes to actually connecting those, just like so. Now, what that will do is it will just give enough power until the battery is charged. You will have a red light and a green light, and whenever it's charging, the red light will be on. When it's charged enough, uh, the green light will come on and it will stop charging, so it is actually very good for your battery. Okay, if you are going to lay up, like I said, be careful of your battery um, because it may be providing power to your security system. And again, that might be part of your uh, insurance policy. If you do disconnect your battery, set it on something like carpet or cardboard or something like that, but don't set it on a, a concrete floor because again, it's just not good for the battery. Okay, so as part of your process, you're gonna to want to make sure that all of the grills inside and out are kept clean. Now, if I just remove this grill, uh, what you can see is there's a mesh in here. You wanna give that a good old wipe down and a, and a vacuum uh, to make sure that you've got rid of cobwebs and anything blocked that particular area. But another uh, issue that comes up is dampness inside properties like this. And what you'll find is that the silicone around these particular vents can actually perish. So just give that a check and if it needs to be re-siliconed, obviously uh, get that sorted out to, to stop the dampness. When you do have that grill back up, don't cover any of your grills around the property at all because as I say, that is allowing the air to circulate. It's a good sterilizer uh, and it should just keep the dampness down. Right, so you're going to want to protect your property from the wind and the rain and the snow, etc. So obviously, uh, your own inside storage or paid for storage would be best. Um, if you could put your property under a porch, that would be good. And if not, if you had a, a cover to put over the top of it, um, that would be good as well. Now, I, when it comes to covers, what you want is a waterproof, yes, but you want a breathable cover. Uh, there's a lot of covers that actually are just plastic inside. And what that's going to do when it's over your property is going to make it uh, create condensation and then it's just going to sweat. Now before putting your property away you're going to want to give it a good wash, uh, wax and a polish. So uh, a particular product here this is a uh, from Mudbuster which is a caravan and motorhome uh, exterior and interior wash and wax and what that will simply do is it will it's very good for washing the property but it will leave a thin layer of wax on there as well and that will keep the rain whenever it hits it just running off and, and you won't get the green coming out of the trees and, and, and staying on your particular vehicle. There is another product here as well which you would use less regularly obviously is a precision polish and this puts just a lovely uh, good sheen on the vehicle as well and it's great for protection during the winter also. Right, so when it comes to the toilet, if you do have a cassette uh, toilet like this, what you're going to want to do before laying up is obviously wash that out, um, hot soapy water. Um, then what you can do is use something like this. This is from Thetford. It's a cassette tank cleaner. What it will do is it will remove any calcium deposits that are in there as well that have, that have just been building up. Now when it comes to gas safety, first you're going to want to switch your gas off after you use your property after every trip. But if you're going to lay up for the winter, what you're going to want to do is disconnect your gas cylinder from the supply here. Because these are rubber hoses and they will perish after a time. Um, so you, obviously you don't want that cracking and getting any leaks from there. Okay, so if the boat has been dry docked and it's up and out of the water and it's on the trailer, another thing you're going to want to do is take the bung out. What that's going to do is any excess water that's gathered under the seats and in the floor of the boat, etc., what it will do is allow that to, to obviously escape. If you don't do that, what's going to happen is that water will sweat throughout the winter months and it will create condensation and more mildew. So, just getting the right size of spanner, get it on the back and take out the bung. Now, it is a better job if you actually use your jockey wheel uh, and raise it up as high as you possibly can. And what that will do is obviously tilt the boat back and you'll get more water out just like that. 
Okay, so we've talked about how imperative it is to get the hot and cold uh, water out of a boat, um, and we've covered that in, in the earlier chapter. But just something is equally as imperative is to get the, the water out of the engine. First of all, if the engine or the boat has been used in salt water, what you want to do is have the engine flushed with uh, clear water to avoid any corrosion. But it's imperative that any water that is in the engine there is uh, taken out. Now, what will happen if it doesn't, and if it does freeze bad enough, is two little core plugs underneath the engine, and if, if the, the, there is freezing and expansion, obviously, uh, water will, when it freezes, will expand by 10%, and it can blow out those core plugs. Now, it can be expensive, and you may have to have the engine removed to obviously have those core plugs replaced back in, and that is actually if you're lucky enough. If you're unlucky enough, the engine block itself could actually crack. So it is essential that, first of all, if it's been used in, in salt water, that the engine is flushed through and second of all the, the water must be removed from the engine to avoid uh, any damage. Okay, again another thing that is imperative for you to do whenever your boat is sitting on the trailer at any time of the year there uh, is bring this engine down but the engine is sitting up in the upward position here at the moment. Now uh, what that's doing is putting an awful lot of pressure on this hinge back here. So one, when the boat is sitting stationary, you just want to bring your engine down to it's about an, an inch off the ground. Now, also in here, and I hope you can see, but there is little rubber boots in here, they're called bellows. And when the engine is in the upward position, what that's doing is it's allowing the sun um, to get at those bellows, and obviously it's going to degrade the rubber. Uh, if you get a, a, one of them tearing, there's two or three of them in the back of the engine there, and if they start to tear, what will happen is, is the boat will actually sink. So what you want to do is make sure that you take the pressure off those bellows because they're being stretched as well. You've got components going through there, elements to do with the stern drive, you've got your exhaust and so on. So the easy way to remedy it is when the boat is sitting stationary, bring the engine down. So we'll just bring that down now. Okay, so before you actually wrap up as part of your winterizing, uh, one thing I could suggest to you is to try and avoid all of the mildew that's going to come uh, whenever you take the covers off at the start of the season. One thing you can do is just use an antibacterial spray. And all you simply do is just you know, spray it on all the parts that have been uh, touched and wipe that all over. And what that will do is it will wipe off any uh, fingerprints and, and so on that have been touched during obviously the particular season. Um, so that can try and keep the mildew down. There's another uh, product here which is called Mold and Mildew Spray Cleaner. Sometimes I've seen people trying uh, to, to clean the leather on boats here and, and to try and get the mildew out of it. They've been rubbing so hard they're nearly rubbing a hole through the leather. But just by taking the particular seats um, and spraying them. Now what you want to do is take the seats and set them off to one side. So do something like that and then just give them a spray with the molten mildew. Now be careful of your clothes because it will contain bleach. Uh, and just give that a good wipe around, let it dry, and then you can use the antibacterial spray just to wipe that off again, or just leave it as it sits. But what that will do is if you just put the spray on and leave it for a couple of minutes, what that will do is it will pull the mildew uh, right out. It's very, very effective um, for that. And as I say, you can get those in most uh, most supermarkets. So a good mold and mildew spray uh, will, uh, will, will work wonders. So speaking as a boat owner myself, and, and this is my particular boat, what you're going to want to do is th right throughout the year is keep your boat in good condition because obviously you want to get as much life out of your boat as you possibly can. What you want to do is make sure that you give it a good wash, especially if your boat has been um, either in lake water, but if it's been in salt water, you're going to want to make sure that you keep your boat continually cleaned to stop corrosion and so on. As I said, these particular products, this one here is actually a caravan and motorhome cleaner, but it's very, very good for the boat as well um, because what it does is it gives it a good wash but what it does is it leaves a, a nice film of wax on there as well and so what that especially during the winter time it allows the green coming out of the trees and so on in the water just to hit hit the side of the boat and, and, and the wax will bounce it off if you have got a bit of time um, I can recommend this as well which is a precision polish and that's worth you know giving it a good buff over uh, maybe once a year or, or, or something like that but these two products uh, Mud Buster they're also made in Northern Ireland so uh, if you go to mud buster.com uh, you'll be able to pick these up very very good products though okay so don't you just love it whenever somebody gives you uh, a little old wives tale for to do something or I, I believe they're called life hacks um, little quick ways around uh, bits and pieces 
On boats, uh, they're very prone, lakes and so on, to getting tide marks. And when you wash and you polish and you do everything, uh, it's sometimes very difficult to get rid of those tide marks. Now this one's actually quite clean at the moment, but I just wanted to show you this. There, there are products on the market, again, Mudbuster do one to be able to clean down uh, these particular tide marks that come, but there is another type of product and you can order it from a chemist and it's called Ozalic Acid Technical and you will find it in chemists, but they probably won't have it in, They'll, you'll need to order it and it'll come through for you. It's sort of like a crystalline uh, type of substance. 10 parts water to one part of the ozalic acid, okay? It's kind of like washing powder for clothes and then basically just mix it up. Now the thing is, it's actually quite watery, okay? So what would happen is if you use it in your sponge, it could just basically run through your sponge. So you're gonna to want to thicken it up. Some people say use wallpaper paste of all things um, to put it on, but obviously you're gonna to want to wash that off quite quickly. What I find is I use two particular products. Again, you can get this one in, uh, in most chemists. Um, this one is called Neutrilis. And basically what it is, is a water thickener. It's used uh, of, for in the medical field um, for people who have difficulty just drinking and swallowing water. Um, so what this does is it thickens the water up. So what you can do is just put a spoonful or so uh, into it. Or what you can actually do, and that will, that will thicken the water, what you can actually do as well is you can just put in some washing up liquid um, and that will thicken it up as well. And obviously then it just sits in the sponge. So I mean if you squirt some in, just give it a stir around. Put a little bit of it on your sponge. And just give it a rub and you will find that that will bring that tide mark off brilliantly. It's absolutely brilliant for that. Okay, so just a little life hack. During the winter, you've got your cover over the top of the boat. You know, trying to keep mildew down, as I say, you can use antibacterial sprays and so on, that's one thing. But what you can do, to use a dehumidifier or to use a heater is obviously going to cost you quite a lot of money. And to be honest, um, you're, you'll, you're going to be really dehumidifying the world. What you can do to try and keep the moisture down just a little bit is these little moisture traps here. And so what you would do is obviously you would fill the top part full of the moisture soaking crystals and obviously the bottom then would collect the water. It, it, it gives you a fighting chance of trying to keep the damp down, uh, the damp air down, but it, it, it really and truly, uh, you, there is going to be gaps around, so it is going to absorb the moisture as well from the outside, but at least it gives you a bit of a fighting chance. Okay, so when it comes to winter storage, obviously um, keeping a boat inside and, and paid for storage or your own storage would be better with, with one big um, nice loose sheet over uh, the entire boat. Um, if that's not the case, what you want to make sure is that take off your night covers underneath um, and that you use a, a, a large light breathable cover that it is still waterproof but that it is breathable um, and as you can see there's vents up there now it's going to get very dirty one thing i would suggest is that you um give it a power hose every once in a while and that will encourage the water just to be able to run off also depending on the lab of the boat you may wish to use your jockey wheel at the front just to make sure that that water does get a chance not to pull uh, in the middle but that it will run off itself make sure you have your uprights there don't use um, a plastic cover because what it will do is it will encourage the the condensation to increase inside and, and obviously it will sweat as such and, and that's what's just going to encourage mildew and so on so a good light cover give it a wash um, every once in a while periodically because it will get dirty and that should be enough nice and light to allow plenty of air to get through those vents and circulate around the boat. Okay so when it comes to winterizing your wheels are very very important as well. Just to show you one little product here again it's another mud buster one um, it can go on paint it's called a fallout remover and it can go on paint or indeed alloys and painted surfaces and so on. Just before I continue on, I'll just spray a bit here to show you what happens. The idea is, is that it will remove metals from coming from brake pads and, and uh, just other particles that come from the road. But it's a very, very good cleaner. What you would do is put it on, then let it sit for a couple of minutes, then wash it off, and then you're ready to put on some polish and so on um, to keep everything tip top. So very good little product there from my Buster. Right, um, so whenever your boat is dry docked, what you're going to find is it's a very, very heavy item um, and it's going to sit on these particular wheels. What you're going to want to make sure is that you've got the pressure set right in your tyres for a start. 
what would happen is if the boat is just going to sit on these particular tires and this is the same for caravans motorhomes and so on anything that's going to sit stationary these tires are going to end up looking like um, 50 pence pieces because you will get like a square piece at the bottom of it so what you're going to want to do is keep moving them backwards and forwards if you can also if they're sitting with the weight on them they will start to crack so you don't want that to happen some people say that if you uh, put cardboard underneath them that that's better for them but what you really want to do is make sure that they keep moving now as well as that what you could do is actually to take the weight off them altogether you could actually just jack them up and put them up on axle stands which is a, a good idea to, to take the weight off the tires themselves what I would suggest is is obviously for security uh, make sure that you have a good wheel clamp uh, in place and um, that you're probably going to need that for your insurance anyway some people fit what's uh, called winter wheels which means that you actually remove the wheel and it sits on like a square uh, a, a piece of metal now that is good for insurance um, and also for security also so just while we've been talking you can see that uh, the fallout has come up with this red this is this is the dirt actually showing itself and the metals showing themselves and it's very very good so what I'll do here is just give this a wee rub just to see so you would wash your wheel down and then as I say you're ready for polish but as you can see there there's quite a lot of black dirt that has, has obviously come off the road and come off the the brake pads and so on so it's very very good for removing that okay so that's the end of the winterizing chapter now this list is not exhaustive and as we come across other bits and pieces we'll be able to put them on the website so from time to time please pop by and just go to the address shown below uh, we'll be pleased to see you